Howdy, howdy. My name is Lily from Makecraft Game, and you're listening to Reading Rulebooks. Today, we're going over Disney's Villainess rulebook. I'm excited for this one because I don't know how to play this game, so I will be learning it along with you. So let's get into it. Take on the role of a Disney villain. To win, you must explore your character's unique abilities and discover how to achieve your own story-based objectives. Each villain guide will inspire you with strategies and tips. Once you've figured out the best way to play as one villain, try to solve another. There are six different villains, and each one achieves victory in a different way. Components Six Villain Movers Captain Hook, Jafar, Maleficent, Prince John, Queen of Hearts, and Ursula. Six Villain Decks 30 cards in each deck Six Fate Decks 15 cards in each deck Six Villain Guides Six boards, three lock tokens, one fate token, 80 power tokens, one cauldron, and six reference cards. Setup. Each player chooses a villain and takes the corresponding board, villain mover, villain deck, fate deck, and villain guide, as well as a reference card. Place your board in front of you. Each board contains four locations. Place your villain mover on the leftmost location. If the rightmost location has a lock symbol in the corner, place a lock token on that location. Shuffle your villain deck and place it face down to the left of your board. Leave room for a discard pile. Draw a starting hand of four cards from your villain deck. You may look at your cards, but keep them secret from other players. Shuffle your fate deck and place it face down to the right of your board. Leave room for a discard pile. Place the power tokens in the cauldron and place it within reach of all players. Choose a player to go first. The first player does not start with any power. The second player takes one power from the cauldron. The third and fourth player each take two power. The fifth and sixth player each take three power. Game Overview Each player takes the role of a different Disney villain. Each villain has a different objective they are trying to achieve. Each turn, Players move their villain mover to a location on their board and perform actions that are available there. As soon as a player has fulfilled their villain's objective, the game ends and that player wins. Read the objective on your board out loud so that all players know your objective. Reference card. One side of the reference card lists how each villain reaches their objective. This will help you determine if an opponent is approaching victory. The other side identifies the action. Villain guide. The villain guide includes details on your objective and other information specific to your villain. This will come in handy during the game. Your realm. Each player has their own board representing their villain's realm. All cards played to your board are considered to be in your realm. Card abilities only affect cards in the same realm. No card in one villain's realm will ever affect a card in another villain's realm. Let's talk through the board. This section will correspond to the image found on the bottom of page 4 in the rulebook. To the left of your board is your villain deck. You draw and play from this deck to reach your objective. The leftmost space is your objective. Each villain has a different objective they must achieve to win the game. Each space on your realm is considered a location. Each realm has four locations you may move your villain to. Fate cards. Your opponents play fate cards to the top of your board adjacent to a location. Villain cards. You play villain cards to the bottom of your board adjacent to a location. Actions. Each location has actions you may perform when you move to that location. On the right side of your player board will be your fate deck. Your opponents draw and play from this deck to hinder your progress. On your turn, do the following in this order. 1. Move your villain. Move your villain mover to a different location. You may move to any location in your realm as long as it is not locked. You may not stay at your previous location. The locked token indicates that the location is locked. You may not move to a locked location. 2. Perform actions. Each location has symbols representing the actions you may take when you move there. You may perform all of the available actions in any order. Each action may be performed one time for each symbol that appears. All actions are optional. We'll get into the types of actions in a later section. During the game, actions may become covered by fate cards. 
If an action is covered, that action is unavailable and may not be performed until the card covering it is moved or discarded. When an action is uncovered, it is immediately available and may be performed if your villain is still at that location and it is still your turn. 3. Draw cards. At the end of your turn, if you have fewer than 4 cards in your hand, draw from your villain deck until you have 4. If you need to draw from your deck when it is empty, shuffle your discard pile to form a new deck. Now it's the next player's turn. Types of Actions Gain Power Take power from the cauldron equal to the number on the symbol. Power is the currency of the game. You need power to play cards and activate abilities. This is represented by the power token symbol. Play a card. Play a card from your hand. You may play only one card for each play a card action. Most cards have a cost that is shown in the upper left corner. When you play a card, you must pay its cost by returning that many power to the cauldron. If you do not have enough power to play a card's cost, you may not play the card. An item or ally may be played to any location in your realm as long as it is not locked. Play the card to the bottom of your board, below the location. This action is symbolized by a square card with an arrow pointing upwards inside of it. Activate. Choose one item or ally in your realm with an activate symbol. Pay the card's activation cost, if any, and perform the card's activated ability. This is symbolized by a square card with a beam of light bursting out from behind it. Fate. Choose an opponent to target and reveal two cards from the top of their fate deck. Play one card and discard the other face up to that opponent's fate discard pile. You decide how to use the fate card's ability against your opponent. By taking a fate action, you can disrupt an opponent's progress. A hero may be played to any location in that opponent's realm, as long as it is not locked. Play the hero to the top of their board, covering the top of the location. This is symbolized by a cloud with a lightning bolt. When you are the target of a fate action, take the fate token from the last player who was targeted. As long as you have the fate token, you may not be targeted. Move an item or ally. Move one item or one ally at any location in your realm to an adjacent location. You may not move an item or ally into or out of a locked location. You may not move an item that is attached to an ally or a hero. This is symbolized by a square card with two arrows on either side. Move a hero. Move one hero at any location in your realm to an adjacent location. You may not move a hero into or out of a locked location. This is symbolized by a square card with a lightning bolt in its center and two arrows flanking it on either side. Vanquish. Defeat one hero at any location in your realm by using one or more allies that are already at the same location as the hero. Each ally and hero has a strength, lower left corner, which may be modified by other cards in the realm. The ally must have a strength equal to or higher than the hero's strength. Multiple allies may be used by adding their strengths together. To vanquish the hero, discard the ally or allies to your villain discard pile. Discard the defeated hero to your fate discard pile. This is symbolized by a torn star. Discard cards. Discard as many cards as you wish from your hand. Cards should be discarded face up to your villain discard pile. Getting rid of unwanted cards will give you new options on your next turn. When discarding, do not immediately draw new cards. You must wait until the end of your turn to draw back to four cards. This is symbolized by a square card icon with an X in the center and an arrow pointing away from a hand of cards. Important! Your villain's location dictates what actions you may perform. However, you can perform those actions at any location as long as it is not locked. Note: Each board is different, and some of these actions may not appear on your board. Types of cards. Each player has two decks of cards. Villain cards with colored backs, fate cards with white backs. You play your villain card from your hand to the bottom of your board, while your opponents play your fate cards to the top of your board. Any card that is at a location on your board is considered to be in your villain's realm. A card's ability is ongoing and in effect for as long as the card remains in your realm. There is no limit to the number of villain cards or fate cards that may be played to a location. As cards are played to locations, slightly offset them so all cards at a location can be seen. Note. Some villains have additional card types unique to them. These are explained in their respective villain guides.
Ally cards appear only in the villain deck and represent your villain's henchmen, helpers, and pets. To play an ally, pay its cost, shown in the upper left corner, and place the card below any unlocked location in your realm. Once allies have been played to a location, you may use them to defeat heroes at the same location by performing the vanquish action. Each ally has a strength, shown in the lower left corner, which may be modified by other cards in the realm. Additionally, most allies have an ability that affects other cards or actions. Once an ally is in your realm, you'll need to decide whether to use it to defeat a hero or keep it in your realm for its ability. Hero cards appear only in the Fate deck and represent the irksome do-gooders who are trying to stop your villain's sinister plans. You play heroes to your opponent's Fate deck by performing the Fate action. To play a hero, place the card so it's covering the top of any unlocked location in that opponent's realm. You can use a hero to hinder an opponent's progress by covering useful actions. The actions covered by a hero are no longer available until the hero is moved or defeated. Each hero has a strength, shown in the lower left corner, which may be modified by other cards in the realm. Additionally, most heroes have an ability that makes it harder for your opponents to achieve their objectives. If there are multiple heroes at a location, the hero covering the action symbols is defeated. Move any other heroes down so one of them covers the symbols. Item cards appear in both the villain deck and the fate deck and have an ability that affects other cards or actions. To play an item from the villain deck, pay its cost, shown in the upper left corner, and place the card below any unlocked location in your realm, unless the card says to attach it to an ally. If an item says to attach it to an ally, you must place the item under an ally in your realm. If there are no allies in your realm to attach the item to, you may not play that item. If an ally with an item attached is moved or discarded, all attached items are moved or discarded with them. All items from the Fate deck are attached to a hero. To play an item from the Fate deck, place the card under a hero. If there are no heroes you can attach the item to, you may not play that item. If a hero with an item attached is moved or discarded, all attached items are moved or discarded with them. Effect cards appear in both the Villain deck and the Fate deck and are one-time events. To play an effect, pay its cost if one is shown in the upper left corner. Do what the card says, then discard it face up in the appropriate discard pile. Condition cards are unusual because you play them during an opponent's turn. They are not played by performing a play a card action. If you have a condition in your hand and the requirement on the card is met during an opponent's turn, you may immediately play the card, do what it says, and then discard it face up to your discard pile. After a condition is played, the opponent's turn continues. Do not draw a new card. You must wait until the end of your turn to draw back to four cards. Activated Abilities Some items and allies have activated abilities, which are cards' abilities that must be activated to be used. Cards with an activated ability include an activate symbol to indicate that their ability is not always in effect. A card with an activated ability is played to a location as normal. Each time you wish to use the card's ability, you must perform the activate action and pay the activation cost, if any. If an ally that has an activated ability is used to vanquish a hero, discard it as normal. Ending the game. As soon as a player has fulfilled their villain's objective, the game ends and that player is the winner. Note: Some objectives are only fulfilled at the start of the turn, as stated on the villain's board. Reference. Realm. All cards in play on either side of your board are considered to be in your realm. A card only affects other cards in the same realm. No card in one villain's realm will ever affect a card in another villain's realm. Locked locations. Some villains have locations that are locked at the beginning of the game, but which may be unlocked during the game. A locked location is denoted with a locked token. A villain cannot move to a locked location. In addition, cards cannot be played to, moved to, or moved from a locked location. However, if a card is at a location that later becomes locked, the card's ability, if any, remains in effect. Playing cards and moving cards. Playing a card refers to adding a card to a villain's realm, either from your hand or from a villain or fate deck. Moving a card refers to taking a card that is in your realm and moving it to a new location. If a card's ability is triggered when it or another card is played, the ability is not triggered if it is moved. 
Likewise, if a card's ability is triggered when it or another card is moved, the ability is not triggered if it is played. Revealing cards and looking at cards. If a card instructs you to reveal cards, either from your hand or from your villain or fate deck, turn the card over so that all players can see them. If a card instructs you to look at a card, either from your villain or fate deck, you may look at them privately, keeping them secret from other players. If you ever need to reveal or look at a card from a deck when it is empty, shuffle the discard pile to form a new deck. Finding a hero. If a card instructs you to find a specific hero and play them, you must take the specified hero from wherever they are and play them. When finding a hero, first check to see if they are already at a location in the realm. If so, remove them from their location and then play them to the specified location. If the hero is not already in the realm, search the fate discard pile and play them. If they are not in the fate discard pile, search the fate deck, play them, and reshuffle the fate deck. Frequently asked questions. What if a card conflicts with the instructions? If an ability on a card violates a rule in the instructions, the card takes precedence. If I reveal a fate card that cannot be played, do I get to reveal a new one? No. If a fate card cannot be played, for example, you revealed an item and there is no hero in the realm to attach it to, the card may not be played and must be discarded. If you are taking a fate action and both cards revealed cannot be played, you must discard both of them without effect. Fate favored your opponent this time. If I defeat a hero during my turn and action symbols are uncovered at my villain's location, may I perform those actions on this turn? Yes. If an action symbol at your location is uncovered during your turn, you may immediately perform the action. Likewise, if an action symbol is covered before you perform that action on your turn, you may not perform the action. If multiple heroes are at one location, do I have to defeat them in a certain order? No. If multiple heroes are at a location, you may choose which hero to defeat. I have a card that will allow me to defeat a hero with a strength of 4 or less. Does this refer to the strength printed on the hero card, or do I factor in other card abilities? Whenever referring to a hero or ally strength, Always consider all other card abilities that are in effect in the realm. For example, if a hero has a strength 5 printed on their card, but another card in the realm gives them minus 1 strength, then that hero's strength is considered to be a 4 for all purposes. If a hero's strength is reduced to 0 by other card abilities, can I just remove that hero from the realm? No. You must still use a vanquish action or card ability to defeat the hero. However, if you use a vanquish action, no allies need to be discarded. You can defeat the hero even if you have no allies at the hero's location. If I use a card's activated ability, do I then discard it? No. The card remains in your realm. There is no limit to the number of times you may activate a card's ability provided you use an activate action and pay the card's activation cost, if any, each time. Can I play or move a hero to the bottom of the board? No. Fate cards are always played to and moved across the top of the board, unless a card ability specifically instructs you to move a fate card to the bottom of the board. So, which villain do you want to be? And that is the rulebook for Disney's Villainous. It's a pretty short and sweet rulebook, which makes it a very easy reading rulebooks episode. I'm really curious about the different villains and objectives. I chose not to discuss them in this episode because I kind of want it to be a bit of a surprise. I don't like knowing what the capabilities of each villain or each character are before going into my first game. I'd rather just like blindly go in and just pick one that appeals to me the most at that time. I'm definitely curious when I'll be able to get this to the table as it is a little outside of the realm of what I normally play. But that is the episode on Villainess. If you like this podcast, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe on either wherever you download the podcast from or on the Makecraft Game YouTube channel always appreciate it. And if there is a rulebook that you want to hear on the podcast, just leave a comment on any reading rulebook episode on the YouTube channel. Also, make sure to check out makecraftgame.com for more cool content about making, crafting, and obviously board games. Hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you next time on Reading Rulebooks. Bye!